skills are easily one of the most neglected aspects of most players' skyblock profiles, because generally speaking, they take too much time to level up and are seen more of as an optional activity rather than the main content people want to participate in. Unfortunately for most, skills shouldn't be treated as an optional activity, because they actually contribute heavily to your profile's base stats, which will enable you to more effectively complete the content that you actually want to do. As a result, I've taken the time to put together the perfect beginner's guide to leveling every single one of your skills, whether it be your standard combat and foraging skills to your weirder social and runecrafting skills. So with all of that out of the way, let's get straight into today's video. Before I cover all of the skill leveling content for today, I'm just going to quickly go over the video structure and the goals with today's video. I want to make it clear that this video will be a generalized skill leveling guide catered towards mostly early to mid game players. As a result, I do not recommend that you use the tips in this video to level your skills once you reach past this stage, because there will likely be much more effective methods at your disposal. If you are looking for a video that covers hyper-efficient endgame setups with the most intricate skill leveling strategies, I will leave a few of them in the description of this video, but I would suggest looking for this information yourself elsewhere since this isn't the place for it. Nonetheless, today's video will be split into the following categories on screen. In each section of the video, I will cover some basic gear you should be using to level the skill, and then I will follow it up with the actual strategy itself. If there are any extra useful tips that I can provide, I will include these too, and if you ever need help navigating this video, I will have timestamps placed throughout it to help you find what you're looking for. Either way, now that we've got that covered, let's talk about the first skill for today, the combat skill. To level combat quickly and efficiently, you're going to need some very simple gear. This includes a solid early game weapon of any sort. If you don't know what weapon you should be using, I do have a weapon progression guide linked in the description of this video. A solid early game armor set of any sort. I always recommend unstable dragon or strong dragon armor, but if you can afford better, that works too. A basic pet for damage. The easiest option is a rare enderman since it's dirt cheap, but if you can afford better, that also works. As many of the cheapest talismans as you can get. Even if it's just talismans from the adventurer NPC, this is better than nothing. In the earliest stages of combat, the easiest way to level this up actually doesn't require anything but a pickaxe and the dwarven mines. I'll talk about unlocking the dwarven mines in the mining section of this video, but once you do have it, all you need to do is head to the great ice wall and use your pickaxe to farm ice walkers. Having armor can make this a little bit easier since you won't be prone to getting one shot all the time, but if you don't, you can sit up on this little ledge and safely hit a few of the ice walkers with every spawn. The reason this works so well is because ice walkers have high combat XP rates with a low entry level to fighting them, due to pickaxes dealing 80 times more damage to the ice walkers compared to swords. If you farm ice walkers uninterrupted for around two to three hours, you should be able to easily reach combat combat 16 to 18, where you can progress with the next tips in this video. Once you've reached combat 18, you gain access to a lot of cool gear, most notably some dragon sets and the aspect of the dragons. Obtaining this gear with some decent enchants, a basic pet, and a little bit of magical power will serve as a very powerful early game combat setup. This setup should comfortably allow you to get started farming tier 3 Revenant Slayer, which will not only be great combat XP, but will also help progress your Revenant Slayer level to unlock some other very useful items. You can also do Tarantula or Wolf Slayer as alternative options, or even farm Zealots in the Dragon's Nest. As long as you're fighting mobs with solid combat XP rates that are within the reach of your setup, you'll have an easy time leveling this skill, and it's something that you'll just passively level with time. For my bonus tips to leveling combat, focusing the bestiary can be a viable tactic as well. In the early stages, the bestiary doesn't give the greatest combat XP, but the more unique mobs you fight and the more bestiary levels you obtain, the more combat XP you'll get rewarded for it, and thus, the higher your combat level. I never recommend this as a method that you should actively grind for, but it's good to keep this in mind as another option since it can be useful. But now that we've got combat out of the way, it's time to move on to the foraging skill. To level up your foraging more efficiently, you're going to need an Efficiency 5 Golden Axe, a Jungle Axe, Haste 3 Potions, full Young Dragon Armor, a Tree Capitator, and an Ocelot and a Monkey Pet. In the earliest stages of foraging, a basic Efficiency 5 Golden Axe with Haste 3 and a Jungle Axe will suffice to get you some quick and easy foraging levels. The strategy here is to break the bulk of the tree using the jungle axe and then to finish the rest of the logs off with the golden axe while the jungle axe is still on cooldown. 
The best wood to farm is dark oak, since the trees in this region are the thickest, but due to how competitive dark oak farming can be, pick a less competitive section of the park until you have a better setup. All logs give the same base XP, so it doesn't really matter which layer you choose. Once you have the funds for it though, you'll want to replace both the jungle axe and the golden axe with a tree capitator. This is just an upgraded jungle axe that breaks substantially more logs with the ability, and it's also a golden axe, meaning that you can insta mine the logs while the ability is on cooldown. Pair this with full young dragon armor, some haste potions, and an epic ocelot pet, and you should be able to compete with the other foragers in the dark oak section of the park. Once again, if it's still too competitive and you'd rather some more peace and quiet, you can choose other sections of the park for slightly less XP per hour, but the goal is to be zooming around with 500% speed in the dark thicket. For my bonus tips to leveling foraging, a cool trick that you can use with a more mid-game setup is pet swapping. This is a little bit more expensive and technical, but if you choose to do it, here's how. First, buy an auto pet rules 2 pack, redeem it, and then set the first pet rule you get to spawn a monkey pet when you cast a fishing rod on the park island. Then set the second pet rule to spawn an ocelot pet when you gain foraging XP on the park island. You don't have to specify the park island, but I would recommend doing this so you don't accidentally trigger this pet rule in other parts of Skyblock. Then with these rules set up, grab a fishing rod and your tree cap, cast the rod to equip your monkey, cut down a tree, and then recast the rod to re-equip the monkey. Then repeat this for as long as you're willing to grind, and you'll be leveling your foraging as efficiently as you can be. But now that I've covered foraging, let's talk about leveling your mining skill. The gear you'll need to level this skill includes an Efficiency 2 Golden Shovel, a Fractured Mithril Pickaxe, Glacite Armor, and a Silverfish Pet. For the very beginning stages of mining, the only thing you'll actually need is the Efficiency 2 Golden Shovel. This is because after you've unlocked the Farming Islands at Farming 5, you can instamine sand using the shovel, which in return will grant you some very quick mining XP. Using this trick, you can very comfortably hit Mining 12, well, I'd recommend stopping since you'll have unlocked the hardest requirement for the Dwarven Mines. Unlocking the Dwarven Mines is the next major step to leveling your mining. All it takes is to make your way through the deep caverns until you reach the Obsidian Sanctuary, interact with Reese, and then bring him three sets of ten different enchanted ores. Once you've done this, you'll gain access to the Dwarven Mines, which will enable you to start properly leveling your mining skill. From here, you want to equip a full set of Glacite Armor and head to the Royal Palace. This is where you'll find seven kings and the queen, where you'll be able to interact with the current king to get given some commissions. Completing these commissions is easily the best way to earn some mining XP in the early stages of the game, and you'll also gain Heart of the Mountain XP to unlock the requirements for gear upgrades. Once you've gotten sick of commissions or they're just starting to become less efficient, you can stick to just mining mithril anywhere in the mines. All types of mithril give the same mining XP, so it's best to just mine the grey wool or clay blocks using a fractured mithril pickaxe, which you can purchase from Boo Boo for about 10,000 coins. Doing this with your silverfish equipped will also maximize your XP gain, so make sure to do that as well. For my bonus tips on leveling mining, I want to talk about the mining events, the crystal hollows, and the pico nimbus. Mining events are just random events that happen throughout the Dwarven Mines or Crystal Hollows, and I strongly suggest that you participate in these as they'll grant you a little bit of Heart of the Mountain XP and they grant solid mining XP. Now, what are the Crystal Hollows you might be asking? Well, it's simply an extension to the Dwarven Mines unlocked at Heart of the Mountain 3. Upon arriving at the Crystal Nucleus found at the center of the Crystal Hollows, you'll find Emissary Cisco, giving you a whole different set of commissions entirely, which will also grant you Mining and Heart of the Mountain XP. If you're trying to gain Mining XP off of commissions, then the Crystal Hollows is the way to go. But if you're sticking to typical Mithril Mining, I wouldn't recommend doing that on the Crystal Hollows until you've got a good grasp of what Route Mining is. This is definitely more late game information though, so I'll leave more comprehensive mining guides in the description of this video if you'd like to learn some more information. As for the Pico Nimbus, this is a very powerful pickaxe that you can use without any mining or Heart of the Mountain requirements. The catch? It has a durability of 5,000 blocks, meaning that you'll need quite a bit of money to keep replacing your pickaxe every time it breaks, and if you're an Iron Man player, you're gonna have to grind for these quite a lot if you want to have a reliable amount of Pico Nimbuses. If you have the money or time to afford this, I would strongly recommend it though, because it'll be much more cost effective and efficient than any of the other early game tools. You'll want to stop buying Pico Nimbuses once you reach Heart of the Mountain 6, 
where you'll be able to upgrade into a gemstone gauntlet, the first proper mining tool that you can get if you're taking mining seriously. That being said, that covers everything for early to mid game mining. Moving on to farming now, here's the gear that I recommend to get yourself started. A rookie hoe with harvesting 5, farm suit or farm armor, and a rabbit pet. When you first start leveling your farming, the quickest and easiest thing you can do is head over to the farm on the hub island and break as much wheat as you possibly can just using your bare hands. This will very quickly give you a ton of crops, levels, collections, and coins, which you can then take to one of the NPCs on the hub island and then sell off all of your ingredients. With this money, purchase a rookie hoe from the farming merchant for 10 coins and then go back to the farms to farm more wheat. If you have a rank, you can talk to the hub selector and click on the random hub button to get thrown into a private lobby where the farms should be full of wheat ready for harvest. If you don't have a rank though, just look through the hub selector for mega lobbies with very few players in them and keep cycling through them until you find ones that are full of wheat. You should be able to farm wheat with your rookie hoe until you reach around farming 10 where I'd advise you to stop going for farming as the next course of action is to unlock the garden. The garden is a special farming island that you unlock once you reach Skyblock level 5. This can be obtained from doing pretty much anything around Skyblock, and once you've reached level 5, Sam will visit your island and introduce you to the garden. Make sure you complete this mini quest as it'll give you a very solid understanding of how the garden works, but if you're still unsure, I'll leave a detailed garden guide in the description of this video. Once you've cleared out some plots and you're ready to start farming though, you can fill these plots with massive farms that will level your farming skills super efficiently. In the early stages, you can use automatic presets to build the farms for you, but once you get the hang of everything and you want something better, you can build your own farms to maximize your XP gain. The best farming designs tend to change relatively frequently over the course of different updates, so while looking around for updated building tutorials is a viable option, you can also visit Melon King DE's garden to have a look at what should be the most updated farms for every crop. The reason I recommend you visit Melon King DE is because he's a top level farmer at the time of recording this video, and if there's anyone that will have good building designs, it would definitely be him. His garden also has heaps of other miscellaneous gardening tips that can help out other players, so I'd recommend just checking out his island in general since it might answer a lot of your questions. For my bonus tips when it comes to farming, I'm going to briefly touch on some gear progressions and the best crop to farm for XP. I mentioned using farm suit or farm armor as your entry level setup, but once you've gotten the hang of things, you'll want to upgrade into 3 quarters melon armor and rancher's boots. Rancher's boots in particular are super important since it allows you to set different speeds to your shoes, which will let you adjust how fast or slow you go when farming certain crops. Melon armor is super upgradable and is the first proper farming set that you'll get your hands on, so that's something that you'll want to work towards as well. Upgrading your rookie hoe will also be necessary at some point in your farming progression, which you can do by simply purchasing any of the crop specific tools depending on what crops you plan on farming. These tools all have their different tiers varying in costs, so just go for whatever you're willing to spend your coins on and that will dictate how much money you earn. You should also be using the Blessed Reforge if you're focusing strictly XP, as the Bountiful Reforge is more of a late to end game thing and it's designed specifically for coin gain. As for the most XP per hour, Mushroom will be your best bet, but until you reach the garden requirement for Mushrooms, you can use basically any other crop as they're all mostly the same. Moving on to the fishing skill, here's the gear that I'd recommend going for. Tier 11 clay minions, at least 10 of these. A chum rod, a challenging rod, angler armor, and salmon armor. To get started on fishing, my biggest recommendation is to not manually fish at all, and just do the first 10 to 15 levels solely off of clay minions. This is because manual fishing in the earliest stages of the game is incredibly slow, and it's not something that you can easily level passively like your combat skill. That being said, if you don't want to sacrifice your minion slots for this and you're determined to manually fish, here's what you do. I recommend talking to both Moby on the Mushroom Desert and the Fisherman on the Hub Island where the Clay Pond is. Both of these NPCs will give you a little quest time that you can complete, the Fisherman will just ask for 5 Clay Balls, and Moby will ask you about some mushrooms that you can obtain around the area he's in. The Fisherman's questline will give you a Prismarine Rod, which can be really useful to get started with fishing, while Moby will teach you everything you need to know about chum fishing and how it works, which will be really important to level your fishing XP quite quickly. The Moby questline will also give you a little bit of fishing XP, and it'll help you gather the resources to purchase your first proper fishing rod, which is the Chum Rod. 
Before the chum rod, you can use the fishing rod that the fisherman NPC gives to you. But another option that does exist is the fishing rod that the fisherman merchant sells on the hub island. But this thing is complete trash. So you probably want to replace this as soon as possible. Then once you've obtained a chum rod and full angler armor, you can head to the birch section of the park to fish in the squid pond. Ideally, swap lobbies until you find one that's raining, and even better yet if you can find a fishing party that's consistently buying rain. Rain increases your chances to catch squids, and it also causes them to spawn naturally, helping to increase your fishing XP and collection gain. At this pond, you'll also want to place down a chum bucket and fish for as long as you like, filling your chum bucket every time you get the chance to, to grant yourself a little bit of extra fishing XP. This is basically it for manual fishing, and the only changes you'll really make to the strategy is upgrading into salmon armor when you get the chance, and then upgrading into the challenging rod as well. For my bonus tips on leveling fishing, I'm going to talk about barn fishing, yeti fishing, and lava fishing. Barn fishing is an old technique that requires you to head to the barn from a different island. Traditionally, you'd go from the spider's den since the spider's den can naturally have rain, but since Hypixel put barriers up that prevent you from doing this, you'll need to teleport from the hub island instead. You won't get any rain here, but you can get full privacy with the help of private lobbies, which will let you pull off this strategy. Basically, all you need to do is fish up on this ledge using a fishing speed pet so that all the sea creatures you catch fall down below. Then you can swap to a squid pet, drop down on the clump of mobs, and then wipe them all out. And the reason you want to switch to a squid pet is because it grants extra fishing XP that you'll end up getting from the sea creatures that you caught with a different pet. This setup requires a lot of money and has a higher barrier of entry though, so it's not something that I'd recommend when starting out. As for yeti and lava fishing, this can be done on Jerry's workshop when it's open, or the Crimson Isle, and will let you catch a whole different set of sea creatures with varying loot and XP gain. Typically, these islands are also a little bit more late game, so this stuff is just to think about if you wish to pursue fishing even further. Once again, I will also leave a detailed fishing guide in the description of this video to provide you with extra information if you need it. Now that I've got fishing out of the way, the next skill I'm going to cover is alchemy. I would cover the necessary gear required to level this skill, but you don't actually need any gear to max it out. What you do need is around 80 million coins to get started though, since you will need to buy a lot of ingredients up front that you'll be able to resell later. Leveling the alchemy skill is really simple. All you need to do is brew a ton of potions, collect all the potions, and boom, you gain XP by just doing that. If you repeat this step over and over and over again, eventually you'll max out the skill and all you needed was the ingredients to brew all these potions. Now, which ingredients do you need? Well, there's really only two main options to pick from. If you're not an Iron Man player, I'd suggest using Enchanted Fermented Spider Eyes on water bottles to create weakness potions, and then use regular Glowstone Dust on these potions to increase the NPC sellback cost. If you are an Iron Man player, then Enchanted Sugarcane will probably be your best bet, since you can hand farm it much easier than you can hand farm Enchanted Fermented Spider Eyes. Now, I do have a completely separate video that teaches you how to profit from your initial 80 million coin investment, so I'll leave a link to that full guide in the description below. For my bonus tips on alchemy leveling though, the biggest thing that I can recommend to players is to prepare it months in advance. For those that aren't already aware, one of the three special mayors that can be elected into office is called Mayor Derpy. Derpy has one really cool perk, a global 50% skill XP boost. If you prepare all of the ingredients to max out your alchemy months before Derpy gets elected, then not only will you get them at a cheaper price, but you'll also be ready to make the most of this 50% skill XP boost. And this is because everyone else has the same idea and they artificially inflate the markets due to the increase in demand. If you don't want to wait for Derpy though, an alternative mayor would be Diana with her 35% pet XP boost perk. Even though she doesn't boost your skill XP gain, she does boost the XP gain of your pets, allowing you to level more pets during the alchemy leveling process to resell after the fact. This isn't as effective as Derpy's 50% skill XP boost and will require you to brew even more potions, but it can be an option if you want to level your alchemy sooner than Derpy. But now that I've finished covering the alchemy skill, next up in this video is the enchanting skill. 
Similar to alchemy, you don't really need any gear for enchanting, just a little bit of money and the experimentation table. The experimentation table requires enchanting 10 to craft and use. So before then, all you really need to do to level your enchanting skill is to enchant all the equipment you'll need for the other skills I covered in this video. This table is literally everything you'll need from enchanting 10 all the way to enchanting 60. The goal with this table is to complete your experiments every single day, and if you do that, you'll be rewarded with a very generous amount of enchanting XP every time you do this. The more you level your enchanting, the higher tier of experiments you'll unlock, and really all you need to do with this skill is stay consistent and complete it at least once a day. As long as you do this, it should take you around a month to max out your enchanting skill completely, granting you some easy coins, free intelligence, and easy pet XP levels. For my bonus tips on this skill, you can purchase an epic guardian pet or higher to help increase your enchanting XP with every experiment you complete. If you decide to fork out the money for the mythic guardian, then you'll also have an increased chance of getting good drops from the super pairs experiment which can have some insane payouts in the long run. Aside from this, using the bits you gain from eating booster cookies and some XP lets you reset the experimentation table three times per day, allowing you to complete your experiments four times every day at the maximum. Typically, people won't do the very last reset since it costs a lot of resources, and even doing three experiments per day instead of four is still going to level you up really quickly. Moving on from this, I'm now going to talk about the Catacomb skill, which is also very simple to level and insanely straightforward. The gear you'll need to level your Catacomb skill is a weapon of your choice. I do have a dungeon weapon progression guide linked in the description of this video if you need help picking one out. You'll also need an armor set of your choice. I have yet to update my dungeon armor video at the time of this video being posted, but when I get around to it, I will leave a link to this in the description of this video. And you'll also want to preferably have a skill average of about 25 to 30 before you start doing any dungeons. To level your catacomb skill, you just have to run dungeons. That's it. There's really nothing else to it. The dungeons you want to be running are based entirely off of whatever the highest dungeon floor you can reliably complete is. So if that's floor 3, then run floor 3 until you're good enough to run floor 4. As you continue through different dungeons and gain more experience, your catacombs level will just increase over time. Dungeons are arguably one of the most enjoyable aspects of Hypixel Skyblock, so I'm sure you'll have no problems with doing this. As for my bonus tips for leveling the Catacomb skill, one thing I recommend to all players is dungeon accessories. The two that I have in mind are the Catacomb's Expert Ring and any variation of the Scarf's Studies, because these talismans will level your Catacomb's XP and your class XP much quicker. They can be on the pricier side of things though, so it's something that you'll want to obtain at a later point in progression, but it can definitely help to level your Catacombs XP much quicker. I'd also like to point out your daily dungeon runs. For those that didn't know, the first 5 runs you do on any particular day have boosted Catacombs XP yields. If you take advantage of this, you can level your Catacombs XP much quicker by choosing to do your 5 daily runs every day, similar to how you should be doing your experiments every day. Aside from that though, that's about it for leveling the catacomb skill, so now I'm going to talk about leveling the taming skill. Taming is another really simple and straightforward skill to level in Hypixel Skyblock. All you have to do to gain taming XP is to level pets, and to level pets, you just have to level any skill with a pet equipped, even if it's not the desired skill for that pet. Pets will level quicker and thus grant you more taming XP if you level the skill corresponding to that pet, so where possible, you should be trying to do this. As for some bonus tips, the experimentation table and the alchemy skill are really good ways to level up pets for fast taming XP. The experimentation table in particular is great because you get one free experiment every single day, and once you've maxed your enchanting skill and a guardian pet, you can just continue to level more and more pets with your daily experiments to grind more taming XP. Alternatively, you can also level other types of pets even though they're disadvantaged, but because the experimentation table grants so much XP, it'll still be worthwhile. The alchemy skill is also really fast and levels pets quickly, but it's super costly and I wouldn't recommend it unless you have absurd amounts of money lying around. But that's about it for taming, so now I'd like to talk about carpentry. Carpentry is even easier than taming because instead of leveling pets, you just have to craft items. 
I don't think I'll really need to explain this at all, since you'll be crafting items for as long as you play Skyblock for, and thus your carpentry skill will just naturally increase. I do have some bonus tips though, and that's if you'd like to specifically level the carpentry skill really quickly. If you have the collection for it, crafting fine gemstones into flawless gemstones grants 57,600 XP per craft. So if you set up some buy orders to get to crafting, you can level your carpentry really quickly and lose next to no money in the process. Alternatively, you can also craft enchanted diamonds into enchanted diamond blocks. However, these only give 7,680 XP per craft, and as a result, are much slower. Personally, I wouldn't bother too much trying to focus your carpentry skill, but if you really want to dedicate some time into it, this is the easiest way. And now that I'm done covering the carpentry skill, it's time to move on to our first cosmetic skill, rune crafting. Since this is a cosmetic skill, it doesn't actually count towards your skill average or really help you competitively in any way, but since it's still a skill, I'm going to cover it. You can level your rune crafting by killing runic mobs you'll occasionally find throughout Skyblock, fusing runes together at the runic pedestal, or by just killing most bosses and mini bosses. Runecrafting XP gain is also increased based off of which rank you have on the server, with MVP++ getting a 3x multiplier, compared to the 2x multiplier that a normal MVP+, will get. This is all pretty useless knowledge though, and all you really need to know is that runecrafting is a way that ranked players can use cosmetics in Skyblock, so this isn't a skill you should be trying to level at all. For the sake of the video, I guess the only bonus tip I have is that cycling through Nether Island mini bosses or mass murdering dragons is unironically an efficient way to level your runecrafting, but if you went out of your way to do this just for the runecrafting XP, you're actually just crazy. And now that we have runecrafting out of the way, that brings me to the final skill of this video, the social skill. This is also just another cosmetic skill that does not affect your gameplay whatsoever, but it's leveled by visiting people's islands, having people visit you, completing challenges on people's islands, and so on. This is something you'll end up leveling over time as you continue to play Skyblock, since you'll likely find yourself visiting people or having people visit you for all sorts of different things. For the bonus tips of this section, you can AFK on other people's islands to get easy social XP, but that's super slow and not really that great. The best ways to level your social XP to my knowledge is to create something cool enough that would cause many unique players to visit you while your island is open, because each new visit grants social XP. You also get social XP for the amount of time people decide to spend on your island, so if you're able to somehow create that sort of engagement, I guess you can gain more XP from that too. You can also experiment with private island minigames and other weird stuff like that, but once again, why would you bother if it's just a cosmetic skill? But there you have it, that concludes all of the information I had for the social skill, and thus for every single skill in Hypixel Skyblock. Hopefully you did find this guide useful, informative, or enjoyable in some way, and if you did, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I post this sort of content frequently here, so if this does pique your interest, you won't regret it. Once again, I would like to remind you that I've left a collection of more specific videos in the description of this one, so if you wanted more detailed clarification on leveling some skills, I'd suggest checking those out as well. Either way, that's all from me for now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.